My name is Fiti Hiriaka. I come from Aotearoa, New Zealand, and I'm a playwright and novelist. Uh, the best thing about writing from New Zealand, I guess, is I have freedom to write whatever I want to write, um, which I didn't really realise until I came here and met other writers from around the world who uh, have to be careful about what they write. Um, so yeah, I, I can write whatever I'd like in whatever style I like. It might not necessarily get published, but yeah, I at least have the freedom to speak my mind. So that's the best thing about, about being a writer in New Zealand. Um, the worst thing would be that it's really hard for um, a small country such as ours to get out into the world. We have a few superstars who are, hopefully will bring some of us with us, um, with them, but yeah, to get such a small market out into the wide, wide world is quite difficult. So I grew up in a small town called Taupo. So um, there is a writer there, Roli Habib, who was one of the first Māori uh, playwrights and poets. Mm. Um, and he says he finds it so difficult to live there and to, to feed his artistic, artistic soul. Mm -hmm. It feeds him spiritually to be home, but it's hard for him to, to work as an, as an artist. So uh, I had to leave home to go to university and so I chose Wellington because it had a, a reputation for literature and for uh, theatre. So I chose to go to Wellington. So I chose to be in a place that has a lot of creative people so that would um, support me, I guess, in, in my journey. Yeah, and um, I guess there's, there's quite distinct modes of being in, in different places in, in New Zealand. Um, generally there's, there's kind of the North Island and the South Island and, and um, the South Island can be quite uh, focused on agriculture because there's a lot of agriculture down there. There is in the North Island too but the North Island is more populated mm -hmm. so um, it's kind of more urban in a way. What I love about New Zealand, I think, is what I love about everywhere. Um, it's the people. It really is the people. And um, we're a very dry kind of people. Dry sense of humour can be quite sarcastic. So I, I miss that about New Zealand. Um, and just kind of physically, I miss the, um, the landscape. And I hadn't realised how, how much that would affect me. But yeah, I miss the sea and I miss the, the mountains. Um, but yeah, it's more about the people than, than that. Yeah, it's nice. I've tried to think about this. Uh, when I did uh, get admitted to the bar, uh, my brother-in-law said to me, so now that you're admitted to the bar, you're going to give up this writing thing for a while and, and, and try the law. And to me, what he said is, are you going to give up breathing for the next couple of years and try the law? It's, it's just something I do. Um, and it, it helps me try and figure out how the world works. So yeah, I, I kind of need to write. In a, in a, and it is quite physical, which is very odd. So if I haven't written in, in maybe a couple of weeks, I get kind of anxious and antsy and, and yeah, just need to kind of release what, what I've got in my head. Patricia Grace's book, Two. So that's named after the God of War. So it's not like two, but two, um, which is a a novel about uh, a Māori fa family in World War II um, and all of the sons go off to fight in World War II and they, they're also suffering from the effects of World War I. So it's that funny time in our country's history where um, we're trying to assert ourselves as a country and yeah, just the effects of war on, on our people especially for Māori people because um, in both those wars Māori weren't conscripted but they chose to fight 
and they chose to fight um, mainly so they could get recognition at home that they were full citizens, mm -hmm. that they deserved rights and deserved respect of, of other New Zealanders. So that's really important and it's just so moving, it's very moving. I mean that makes it sound all history but it, it is a very personal domestic story which I really like. Um, Wati Himaira, which is a, um, his novel Bully Basha, which I read all the time. It's called Bully Basha, King of the Gypsies. Um, and that's, again, it's, it's a certain t time in history. It's um, in the 50s or 60s, and it's about a Māori sharing gang, but mostly it's about a family and how um, myth-making in the family has affected them. So that's another great novel to read. Um, in, in terms of plays, Bruce Mason's work, um, he wrote a series of plays called The Healing Arch. So Bruce Mason was a Pākehā writer, which is New Zealand European, um, and he recognised that in our theatre Ma there wasn't a Māori voice. So he tried to get Māori playwrights to, play, to write plays, but he didn't have any luck. So he started writing these plays to encourage Māori theatre, um, and it did. A, a lot of people started writing after he kind of opened those doors. Um, and also his play, End of the Golden Weather, which is uh, a one-man play, and it captures, again, a time in New Zealand that, that seems to have gone now. So it's quite nostalgic. I really love that. I do occasionally. I, I have my favourites, like Hone Tufare. It's another New Zealand um, poet. Um, I just love the rhythm of his, his work. Um, I'm reading more now, but it's not uh, contemporary poetry. I'm, I'm looking at traditional Māori oral literature, so that's, that's a type of poetry. Yeah, well we do have mechanisms in New Zealand for the state to support mm -hmm. um, writing. So we have a body, the Arts Council of New Zealand, mm -hmm. otherwise known as Creative New Zealand, mm -hmm. um, which are arm's length from the government. Sorry, I'm going to put all this <laughs> legal jargon in. Mm -hmm. So they're arm, arm's length from the government and their job is to support arts across the board, so literature, uh, performing arts, mm -hmm. all, all those kind of things. So we already have mechanisms in place. And I really do think it's important for a, a country as small as New Zealand to have state um, support because our market is so small it makes it hard for artists to even create things, um, to self-support themselves, I guess. And I think it's really important that we have a lot of our voices um, available to us so we have a sense of, uh, of ourselves. Mm -hmm. I've found it, um, as I've come up as, as a writer, and particularly a Māori writer, I've had young, younger people, younger um, kids saying, I can finally see myself in, mm -hmm. in work. I can see myself on stage. I can see myself in um, novels. So I think it's really important. No, I'm a very strange New Zealander in that this is my first time overseas. Most New Zealanders, um, when they leave high school, they have what we call their OE, which is an overseas experience. So <laughs> most people go off everywhere, but I guess I was quite studious because I was doing two, um, my double degree, so I just didn't have time or money to go overseas. So this is my first time overseas. So um, what surprised me about America is that I've grown up with America and TV shows and novels and movies. So I had a kind of picture of what America is and it, my imagination has been left wanting, I think, because America is so diverse. Um, so since I've been here, I've been to Iowa City, of course, um, New Orleans and Portland, mm -hmm. and about to go to Chicago, New York and Washington DC. But each, each place is, is quite distinct. Um, the people, the culture, the landscapes are very distinct. So I had an idea of America that was quite homogenised. Maybe it's a Hollywood-based America that doesn't exist. So yeah, I've been surprised to find there's a different America in every person, every town, every state. I guess I kind of don't want to be asked a question about my work in a, in a strange way. Because um, I kind of feel like if you need to ask me questions about my work, I kind of failed as a writer. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm hoping that my, my work will stand on its own. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it, that's, I, I hope that's not a facetious a answer, but yeah, it, it, I'm hoping that I don't have to answer questions about my work. I guess I would like to, to say that I'm here in America and whether I like it or not, I'm the represent, representation of Māori mm -hmm. in New Zealand. And that always um, makes me a little bit uncomfortable because I am just one voice in many. Um, and I'd like, like to say that, that, that Māori and New Zealanders in general are very diverse people, much like how I've discovered America is, is very diverse. So it would be great if you could hear more, more Māori voices um, from all our different iwi, which is our tribes in New Zealand. We have, all have quite distinct points of view, quite distinct ways of living. So it would be great if, if the world could hear a multitude of voices and not just one.